Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another garden tour. So it is the very tail end of January. I am very excited to show you all around the garden. There is so much green, so much color for the end of January. I am so excited. I think the garden didn't start looking like this until almost March last year. And of course there still could be some cold weather, so no guarantees, but this is the third year in this space, in this garden, from everything being dirt to this. Um, and so I'm really excited to see how the plants mature this year, but it's also the very first year that I've been able to focus on multi-seasonal interest, meaning not just our perennials or our focus plants, our foundation plants, our shrubs and our bushes, but things like bulbs and um, pansies and things for spring, as opposed to just that middle of the summer, best part of the year planting. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna start over with a little mini seed update with the milk jugs and we will make our way around the entire garden. Let's start. All right, y'all, so we're going to start with a quick update of our seeds. As you can see, the army has grown. We'll link all of the seed starting videos, but starting the milkweed, it is growing amazing now. I'm so excited. Our snapdragons, surprisingly, are not growing as well. Only a few of these even have baby plants. The, uh, the tall zinnias are just fine. These grew last year direct seeded, but I wanted an earlier start. Now our only foxglove to make it through the winter, this guy was planted in November. And likewise, the foxgloves we just started, all growing. I'm so excited. If I get even a couple foxgloves out of these 19 jugs. I will be thrilled, but so far we have three or four in each one. Now I have to split them with mom, but still our sugar baby watermelon. Watermelon along. Look at that. Three little babies. I'm so excited and I'll be planting these in the raised beds this year, so that will be nice. Again, Snapdragons, not quite snapping. I cannot figure out how to grow snapdragons. I tried direct seeding, tried milk jugs. Oh, it's a it's a lake. These are more zinnias, but the short variety. And our gumfrina. At least you've got a couple gumfrinas, gumfrina in. That's exciting. And our big jugs, also gumfrina, which I'm not seeing anything in, but we'll keep watching. We'll keep hoping. Either way, I would say at least 80% of our jugs are working, and that is so much success. I'll show you, but I've already planted out the entire row of lupins, so... Our gardenia is still leafy. It stayed green all winter, but this yellowish green, so hopefully it greens up. I'm not 100% sure because this uh, hydrangea isn't dead. Iris. This little guy is finally starting to leaf up at the base, one of our butterfly bushes. Weeds, don't worry, the weeds always live. We have the opposite problem over here. Butterfly bush, no green. Hydrangea, leafing up. Go figure. Now, this rose needs a little love, but he's doing the best of all my roses. And the Piggy Martin is doing great. Likewise, our one milkweed plant that we planted is starting to, is starting to green up. I do need to cut him back. I meant to do that last year and I forgot. So, you know. From here, we have 
the elusive raised beds that we have yet to put anything in, but at least they're up and I am hoping to fill them sometime in this next month. I literally have my car full of potting soil and compost. So we will have at least four beds to plant in. Y'all will have to help me come up with something to plant in here now that I am reallocating the watermelon and the cucumbers to the raised beds. So, but quite a few of my strawberry plants wintered over and look at this. They are starting to strawberry. How exciting is that? So hopefully we'll actually get some early strawberries this year. From here, the Gara starting to green up. We cut that all back recently. And of course my bush rose, that is a climbing rose now. We, we fed it up the porch and it is starting to really leaf out and put a lot of new growth out, which is exciting. I'm really excited to see this year if training it up the porch will help or hurt its growth. So down here, we've got a couple lambs here that are doing well. The three new gara we planted last year, last uh, fall, look fabulous. But the, the three gara that have been here for two seasons have yet to start greening up. And our comb flowers, of course, are not greening up yet, but they will. Now here's where we may have some losses with that hard freeze. I don't know that any of our Angelonia are going to come back. They are not greening up at all, but they were late bloomers last year. So I'm crossing my fingers that they will come back. And if not, we will replace them. Across the way, we've got some tulips we've got more lambs here my oak leaf hydrangea is not um leafing out yet but you can see it's got plenty of buds all over it so once it does start leafing out hopefully we will actually get blooms this year but if you want to see something really excited exciting all the tulips we planted are starting to come up and they're all creating buds, you guys. So it looks like pre-chilling them and my brother's fridge actually worked. I am so excited, like so excited. We recently planted a bunch of purple dream lilies and this morning we planted some new stargazer lilies. Planted a whole bunch of drumstick alliums and some of our irises the new ones are starting to come up this bed is still a very much work in progress but you know you can't plant everything in one day it takes time adding in a lot of bulbs right now the pansies are still looking good these burgundy ones that looked great last fall are looking a little ratty but the cotton candy ones y'all look at this Look how pretty that is. Obsessed. I don't think either of these hydrangeas, I thought they were dead last year. I'm not seeing them leaf up at all. I think they're both dead, 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 but we're gonna wait. There's no use in pulling anything out now. And if they are, we'll replace them with something else. But box glove coming back. Our Veronica is greening out. Look at those leaves. Look at those leaves. Planted more lilies. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sets of lilies in this area. And of course, once all of our foxglove babies are ready, we are going to interplant all of these lilies with foxgloves all throughout here and behind our fairy all throughout here. Now here's my most exciting thing ever. All those ranunculus bulbs we planted are coming up. I thought we lost them all in the freeze because they were coming up and they died back. But look, they're all green and leafy. Look at this. Look 
hit it. That's green. So hopefully we will have buds soon. I don't know when the buds come. And even our, I think these are agapanthus. Starting to come back. That's, it's all so exciting. Our crepe myrtles should bloom really well. You can see my, my pile of leaves and big branches and little branches that I'm going to use to fill up my raised beds. And even the pincushion flowers are, are coming back. So hopefully we'll actually get pincushion flowers this year. Green on this hydrangea. This is an endless summer. And more buds. Oh, I'm so excited. Now, we also have daffodil bulbs coming up. Now, I planted these last year. They didn't come up. Thought they were all gone. And look, they're coming up in a few places. I planted them all around this tree with alliums. So maybe it was cold enough this year that they got what they needed. I'm not going to fight them. They come up. I will welcome them. Across the way, we are just starting to get some of these tulips. This is the other variety. I planted two varieties, a tall pink single bulb and a double purple bulb. So hopefully those will plant, will plant, bloom at two different times. All of this lamb's ear needs cleaned out, but you can see our, our irises back here starting to come up. This hydrangea, this is still my biggest hydrangea. This will be his third year and you can see all those green buds. A couple ranunculus back in here. A couple more tulips. This poor little lamb's ear. He's next. These pansies still need to be deadheaded, but that is a never ending job with pansies. Need to clean out the bird bath because he's got so many leaves. And then a few lambs here that I have cleaned out. Yesterday we cleaned out all this lambs here, cut back our mums, deadheaded the cotton candy. And this is kind of a funky area, but we have tulips coming up and muscari. So once this is all filled in, tulips and muscari, that'll be a pretty little picture for spring. In the meantime, at least there's color. All this blue looks fabulous. I think we've got a couple green leaves on this hydrangea. Nope, that's a weed. No green leaves on this one yet, but lots of buds. Cleaned this guy out, so he looks drowned after our rain. And these blue pansies haven't been deadheaded, but they look great. Got more tulips and muscari back here. And then our, our ornamental kales and cabbages looked fabulous most of the winter until late December. They got hit by that hard freeze we had and they just, they just pooped out. So we have to plant something else right in here. Normally I have a super tunia vista bubblegum here, so maybe I'll just wait for that. I don't know. We've got foxglove coming back, foxglove. We've got our uh, salvia coming back right in here. More pretty, pretty ranunculus. Our pretty rose. Here's the best part. My Laura Pedlum is blooming. I will get y'all a close up of those blooms, but he's never really bloomed before. So this is exciting. And look, we are just covered in buds. How much fun is that? I love that these are finally mature enough that they are taking up space and height and starting to bloom all my iris and tulips coming up in the back here. 
more fox gloves. So these are all fox gloves that I planted last year as bitty babies. And they are biannuals, true biannuals that did not bloom last year. So this year they should be huge and provide really pretty bloom stalks for us. Some of them bloomed last year, but for the most part they didn't. Our butterfly bushes up here are all starting to green up. I'm not 100% sure. So I believe with butterfly bushes, leave me a comment down below if you know, you are not supposed to necessarily cut them back all the way because obviously the growth is coming up the stalks. So we don't want to cut that off. But I do think you're supposed to cut the dead blooms off. So am I just supposed to come in and deadhead the blooms? Do I need to cut it back by a third? What is the best practice with my butterfly bushes? Because I have two up here that are doing well and I don't want to ruin them. They were gorgeous last year and I only planted them halfway through the season. So I want them to do well again. Knockout roses. These ranunculus, this is actually the area I bought them for, are not half as good as the ones down the way but I planted the ones down the way two weeks ahead of these. So hopefully they're just not quite as established. On the other hand, some of my supertunias are actually coming back here. So go figure. One, two, three, foxglove, lots of tulips. It's gonna be a pretty little spot. This bird bath needs help as well. Kind of kind of winterized them just haven't done anything with them all winter unofficial winterizing need to come through and blow all the leaves out but you know we'll get there more foxgloves see look at this one this is going to be an amazing foxglove this year you can just tell then we have our peonies that I've been planting. We have our lupins that I've been planting and the ones in front of the tree are very yellow and the leaves are kind of funky fresh. Peony. But the ones behind I'll show you seem to be doing better so maybe they're a little more protected. Our foxtail ferns all died back after that hard freeze, but you can see they are pushing new growth. The peony tubers we just planted, doing fabulous. We actually had one iris already bloom over here. I'll try to put a picture. And here are the rest of those lupins. See how much healthier these leaves look? So we'll see. We'll see how many of the lupins survive and what they look like. But bum bum bum. Vitex is doing good. He's in the pile of leaves, but he looks healthy. And the Nandina, you guys. Let me go back here. Look at this color. This is like fire engine red, which is not usually the color I like in my garden, but especially all winter. It has been fabulous amongst all the brown to have such pretty color. So I will take it. Also, my best columbine leaf, columbine, my best lupin leaf of the whole bunch. Go figure. At the back of the garden. While we're back here, let's sneak y'all a peek of the Laura Pedlums. Need to uh, clean out all the window boxes, but they are coming back. So there you go. Look at this. Look at it. I know they're not the prettiest, biggest, excitingest bulbs or blooms, but after two years of these not blooming, this is so exciting. I love it. And the blooms themselves only last a day, but you can see there's just 
dozens of them. There's obviously still lots to come in the garden, but for January, the end of January, where last year I had just brown and dead the entire way through, this year we have green, we have growth, we have color. It's not the perfect garden, but y'all, it's just, it's everything I wanted. And it will only keep getting better. I hope you liked it. Bye.